Hello everybody and welcome to our Sunday service. We are delighted that you're joining with our worship today. Whoever you are, wherever you're from, you're welcome here. My name's Chris and I'm the team rector and our goal is to share Jesus' love with every home in Ely and the surrounding villages. If you're somebody who wants to do that, but you find it difficult or awkward to share your faith, then we have a new short course starting this week on the 28th of April. Three, three evenings on three separate weeks. It's called Don't Mention Jesus, and it's designed to help us share our love, share God's love with every home in Ely. Please register on our website or with the office for details. Finally, if you've joined us during lockdown, it's great to have you with us and we hope you'll feel welcome. It's a bit tough to join an organisation wearing a mask and where we can't serve you coffee, but please do make yourself known to us. Maybe we can meet up for a walk or sit on a bench to get to know you. So let's make a start. Let's ask God to prepare us for worship. Please say the words out loud in bold. Faithful one whose word is life. Come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives. For the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer for the nations of the world as we continue to fight the COVID-19 virus together. Recognising that many of us in the UK are in a very privileged position and we have a responsibility for our brothers and sisters internationally. Let's pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's continue with that great hymn of praise to God, How Great Thou Art. Please join in at home. Thank you. 
Sophia is now going to bring us our reading from St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13. This reading is taken from 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gifts of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when, we com when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall now know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That passage is probably the one I hear most regularly, mainly as a poem in weddings. And it's a very good piece to choose for a wedding, but romantic love really only scratches the surface of its meaning. Paul, the writer, is describing God's gift of love with beauty and clarity. It's a practical piece. It's talking to you and me, here and now, encouraging us to embrace the week ahead, steeped in Jesus' love, but it also talks about the permanence of this love. It will be just as significant after the earth is finally redeemed and we are invited into, the, into God's eternal kingdom after our death. Paul says throughout our Christian lives, three things are really important. Faith, which trusts Jesus for everything. Hope, which is built on the resurrection of Jesus. And love, perfectly displayed by Jesus. And of these three, faith, hope and love, well, love is the greatest. Why? Well, faith won't be needed when Jesus is right here with us. And hope will have completed its role when we can see Jesus face to face. But love, this divine love, will be the essence of our eternal lives, before and after death. Love is the way of life in God's kingdom. We can enjoy it and allow it to develop in our lives right now. Tom Wright says, Love is God's river, flowing on into the future, across the border, into the country where there is no pride, no jostling for position, no contention among God's people. We are invited to step into that river here and now, and let it take us where it's going. But this love isn't fashionable in the West today. And Paul's description of it feels idealistic to us. It feels counter-cultural and doesn't come naturally to us. Where are patience, kindness and humility in a world of next day delivery? Where are modesty and honouring others in a world of influencers on the internet? Where is forgiveness in a world of complex family life? Where is truth in Western politics? Where is protection in a world with human trafficking? I don't know about you, but I could do with some practice in living out this love. But the good news is we can get practicing 
in every situation and in every moment of the day. And St Paul is there cheering us on to live in this love whose value is eternal, which never gets tired and whose effects last forever. But sermons come and sermons go. Ideas and hopes tend to fade. So to help us to take this home this week and apply it to our everyday lives, I've created a handout for us to use. It should help us dwell on the passage, to reflect on it, to act on it, and review how we're doing. Maybe you want to pause and print it off now, or maybe later. But there are three boxes on the handout. I suggest you read the poem and then in the first box, record where you see each quality in the life of Jesus. Then in the second box, look at the same qualities recorded in that poem and write down where you see them in yourself or maybe where you don't. But don't get too frustrated in the second box because the third box is for us to look prayerfully at the qualities in the poem one by one and to imagine ourselves being like that. How would it look? How would we pray for that to happen? Well, we will pray like that at the end of the talk and ask for the Holy Spirit's help. So please feel free to start jotting things down as you think of them during the service, but do keep it by you this week. Keep logging your entries in all three boxes. Use it to picture ways in which we could inhabit this love. How might we react differently? What new choices might we make? How would that feel? What steps would we take to make it happen? And next, next time we find ourselves in a situation, we'll have a much better chance of living up to our own expectations of ourselves. We can begin to abide in God's love each day, and each evening we can reflect, giving thanks for those times when we have demonstrated this love, or when we've received this love from someone else. And then, acknowledge the times when it hasn't been like that, and to bring them to God, inviting the Spirit to transform us further and to ingrain good habits until this love becomes a way of life, becomes natural to us. When I look at my own life, I particularly wish I had more patience. I lose patience quickly. I might hide it well, but it's true. And that is something I'd like to work on. I'll add that to my handout and pray into that each morning. I'll ask God to fill me with his Holy Spirit so that during the day, when I meet someone who is slow to respond to God, I can gently encourage them. When I have to queue outside the supermarket, I can accept it and use the time to talk to someone around me. When a project is moving slowly at church, I can rest in the fact that God has a plan and pray for everybody involved, carefully cast vision and prayerfully take a lead. It'll be so much more productive, I imagine, better for everyone's spiritual and emotional health. So patience is one of the things going down on my sheet this week. Be encouraged because this life of love is within reach of each one of us, because it is the life Jesus wants for us, the life inspired by the Spirit, the life which is our birthright as part of the body of Christ. It will help transform our family life at home, our church life together, our work life, our community life, the life of our nation and the life of the world. Paul paints a couple of pictures in this reading. He says, up to now we might have been like a child playing with this love, which is okay to start with. After all, Einstein said, play is the highest form of research. But Paul says, okay, now. Give me the grown-up stuff. Lord, let me fully embrace this love. Lead me into spiritual, emotional and personal maturity in this love. And in his other picture, he says, this love might be as blurred and distorted as a reflection in a Corinthian bronze mirror. They were famous for manufacturing those. But as we mature into God's love, the fog should clear. And we begin to make out the destiny God has for each one of us. So that as we mature in God's love, we become more like him. God's love is ready for us to inhabit. 
We can use it or lose it. We can abide in it or walk away from it. I implore you not to miss out. One final thought. Up to now in this message, we've been a bit you and me centric. But if you put this poem in its context, reading chapter 12 just before it and chapter 14 just after it, you will discover this is just as much about speaking into love in the church, unity in the church, diversity in the church. This love brings meaning into the church. It brings salt and light into every relationship and to every move we make as a church. If we pray for this love to be among us and between us, St Mary's will be united and influential for God's kingdom. With this love, Paul says, we'll become contagious Christians. We'll lead our friends and neighbours into deep, meaningful, generous and hospitable faith. Because the most loving thing we can do for someone is to share the good news of Jesus with them. Love has broken into our world in the person of Jesus. He is the perfect model of love and this love is open to each of us. We must simply welcome God's Holy Spirit into our lives and abide in God's love and what a change there will be in our lives. So please, do take the handout home. Take some time with it this week, not as a chore, but as a joyful investment in your life and the life of your church, St Mary's. Let your imagination inspire you. And if you'd like to talk it through, then please do make contact with myself or Stephen or Ruth and we'll have a chat with you. Please take the handout as we pray. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonour others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. As we pray, we look at that first box. And Lord, we thank you for the life of Jesus, his death and resurrection. Help us to recognise all these loving qualities in his life. And then we look at the second box. Father, we admit that often our lives don't reflect the qualities in St Paul's poem. Please forgive us. And now we look at the third box. Heavenly Father, we want to live lives like this. We want to commit to your way of life. We surrender our lives to you. Please fill us with your spirit and transform us as individuals and as the church. Transform us into people who love like you do. Amen. Amen. Let's take some time to reflect on that love that is found so perfectly in the depth of our Heavenly Father's love. Please join in at home.
Let's take this opportunity to confess our wrongdoings to our Heavenly Father. A moment of silence. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us for behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son, Father forgive us, save us and help us. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now an opportunity to declare our faith in God. Together we pray. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's take some time to pray for the world. John reminds us in his first epistle that God is love, that he has lavished his love upon us and we show our love for God by obeying his commands. Our prayers are based on the fact that God is love and the way we respond to it. So let us pray. God is love. Loving Father, we thank you that you love us and we are your children. Please help us by what we say and do to show your love to others around us, not so they'll think we're nice people, but so that they may discover your love. Please help us to be patient and kind and to put the needs of others before our own needs. May we share your love with every home in Ely. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God is love. Father, we thank you that when Jesus was living as a man, he showed love and compassion to all in need. We pray for those who feel unloved or unlovable. For people who suffer from anxiety and depression, 
for those whose mental health is worse because of the pandemic. For people who feel they have no worth because they have no work to do. For people who are homeless. For people who cannot feed their families properly. We pray for all who seek to bring help, friends, neighbours and professionals. May they have understanding and the resources they need and may they act with loving patience to bring hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God is love. Father, we thank you that when Jesus was living as a man, he showed love and healed many and brought comfort to those who were sad. We pray for those who are ill at home or in hospital, for those who are grieving for a loved one. And we pray for all working in our hospitals, surgeries and care homes. May they have patience and perseverance and the skills and resources they need to do your loving, healing work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God is love. Father, we thank you that when Jesus was living as a man, he showed respect for authority and challenged it when necessary. Please help us in the elections next month to use our votes well, to vote for those who seek the best for the poor and vulnerable in our communities and seek to act with truth and integrity. And we pray for Her Majesty the Queen, the Prime Minister and Government, and the leaders of all nations, that they may recognise that ultimate authority lies with you and that you use power with loving mercy. May they always seek to act in ways which are good for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God is love. Father, we bring to you our Archbishop Justin, Bishop Stephen, Bishop Dagmar, Chris and our leadership team. Please encourage them and give them joy in serving you. May they lead us as they follow your loving way, that we and all your church may be seen as people who are loving, patient, kind and truthful. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's gather all of our prayers together today in the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Please join in. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And finally, we pray our giving prayer, offering the money we give to all the team churches for their work in the community and amongst our mission partners. Generous God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, we offer our gifts to you with joy, symbol of the work you have given us to do. Use them, use us, in the service of your world, to the glory of your name. Amen. And if you want to start giving regularly to St Mary's or one of the village churches, then please visit our website for the giving section. Thank you. So as we come to the end of our service, let's ask the question in song, how can I keep from singing? Please join in at home.
So thank you once again for joining us this morning. A big thank you to everybody who's participated today. Hopefully we'll see you in person soon at St Mary's, but for the moment we'd love to know who's watching our service each week. So could I ask you that you send us an email to office at stmarysely.org, office at stmarysely.org, and let us know who you are and where you're watching from. That would be really helpful to us. A final blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Goodbye everyone.